Sea anemones may look like plants, but they are actually soft-bodied, sedentary marine animals. They were named anemone after the Greek word for flower, due to how bright and colourful their tentacles are. Anemones are stinging organisms which spend the majority of their time secured to rocks on the seashores. There are over 1,000 species of anemones in the world seas, however we are focusing today on two species local to the British Isles, the beadlet anemone and the snowclox anemone. Anemones may appear sedentary and we may barely give them a second glance, but their intricate adaptions have allowed them to colonise the most sought after locations on the beach and to thrive on our coast for around 540 million years. Sea anemones are a crucial part of the ecosystems on our shores as they have symbiotic relationships with many of the rockfall marine life. This means both organisms benefit from the interaction. Overall, sea anemones provide protection for many small animals in the rock pools by deterring larger predators such as seagulls or crabs from eating them. Anemones are also very vulnerable to climate change. If anemones were to go extinct, then coastal biodiversity would suffer greatly as protection, shelter and breeding grounds for crucial marine life would disappear. Anemones are found on the majority of beaches along the British coast. They require a hard surface to attach themselves to, and they use the bottom of their body, called a base or disc, to create suction that keeps them anchored to the rocks. They will dry out if exposed to air for long periods, so they are usually found lower down the beach, in order to minimise the time they spend out of the water. Anemones that reside on the shores are most likely to be found in rock pools, as this provides protection from the waves, allows access to food, and also prevents exposure to air, even when the tide is out. Although anemones are sedentary organisms, they are able to move. Anemones will move for many reasons, for example, to relocate to an area with more space, away from crowding and competition, or to an area with more available food or sunlight. Anemones can move in two different ways. The first is by using their mucus-covered basal disc, much like a snail, and inching along a surface. Or they can detach themselves from their rock and use twisting movements to swim to a new location. It may not look like it, but anemones are aggressive predators. They are carnivores that are excellent at capturing prey and typically have a varied diet of mollusks, small fish and crustaceans. However, anemones will eat pretty much anything that they manage to ensnare in their tentacles, which are covered in specially stinging cells called nematocysts. They use these cells to paralyse smaller animals, which makes it easier for the anemone to consume. Anemones are incredibly alien looking animals and have a fascinating anatomy. Their mouth is located at the top of their column and is surrounded by a sphincter muscle, which allows it to open and close. The basal disc is found at the bottom of the column and acts as a suction cup. Food is brought to its mouth via tentacles, which then travels down the pharynx with the help of the retractor muscle, which works as an esophagus and allows the prey to be digested in the gastrovascular cavity. Nematocysts are common to all anemones and jellyfish. These stinging cells are located on and around the tentacles and are fired out of the cells that contain them when the trigger hair, known as the nidocil, comes into contact with a structure that could be prey. A sharp barb with an attached thread is released from the cell which is laced with venom. Should the barb pierce the animal the anemone is trying to capture, it will be paralysed or receive a nasty sting. Anemones reproduce both sexually and asexually. Sex is separate in some species, but some exist as hermaphrodites, meaning they can produce both gametes. In sexual reproduction, an anemone will expel eggs or sperm into the water through its mouth. They will then be fertilised by the reproductive cells of surrounding anemones and then develop into a planula. A planula is the larval form of an anemone and moves around using hair-like projections called cilia. With time, the planula will develop into a young sea polyp, which resembles the anemone's close biological relative, the jellyfish. Young sea polyps are able to move using their tentacles until they attach to a rock in order to develop into their adult form. However, anemones do not need reproductive cells in order to reproduce. They can produce a second anemone by essentially splitting in half, known as budding. This process can take between 5 minutes to 2 hours. The anemone will elongate before it starts to split in half, starting at the base. They tend to split through the middle of the mouth, with the sphincter muscle being the last thing to separate. After this process, there will be two separate but identical anemones. Beadlet anemones are most commonly found on the western shores of the United Kingdom and Ireland. However, they also reside along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea and have even been found as far south as Africa's Atlantic coast. They are the only anemone that can live further up the shore as they possess specific adaptations that allow them to survive in both exposed and sheltered areas. However, you can usually find them in rock pools or attached to rocks on the upper mid-tide zone. The beadlet anemone is uniform in colour, usually dark rust red. 
but it can be brown, green or even orange. They have a broad base and a smooth column that is wider than it is tall. They have several bright blue wart-like spots at the base of its tentacles called acarahagy, which are specialised stinging cells. They can grow up to 192 retractable tentacles that are arranged into six distinct circles around its mouth. These tentacles are very sensitive to touch, therefore they may retract their tentacles when they are disturbed. Beetle anemones are a versatile and resilient species. They are adapted to the intertidal zone but can survive in a range of salinities as they have been found in estuaries and temperatures from 2 to 28 degrees Celsius. They are able to survive higher up the shore without shelter from a rock pool and on exposed regions of coast. This is unusual for anemones due to their soft bodies and how easily they dry out when out of water. The beadlet manages this by being able to retract its tentacles within its robust column to protect from strong currents. It can also trap water inside its column to prevent desiccation when it is left exposed by low tides. Beadlet anemones are territorial organisms. They use their acaragi to find other beadlet anemones to secure optimal positions on rocks that lack competition and have a reliable food source. They fight by exposing their acaragi and moving their column to hit the opponent. The loser of the fight will back down and move to a different area or another rock. All fights shown here are sped up by approximately 30 times. In addition to the western and southern coasts of Britain, snake locks can be found as far as the Mediterranean Sea. However, you usually find them in rock pools located in the mid-tidal zone, closer to the sea, as they cannot retract their tentacles, therefore they have a higher risk of desiccation. The green variety tends to be found in sunnier areas of the beach due to a symbiotic relationship with a phytoplankton called zooxanthal, which photosynthesizes. However, the grey snake locks do not have a relationship with this algae and are found in more shaded areas as they don't require sunlight in the same fashion. The snake lock anemone can reach up to 8 cm tall and has long grey or green tentacles. Green tentacles occur because of the chlorophyll within the photosynthetic algae and the presence of green fluorescent protein, or GFP, in the tentacles out of tissue. This glows under UV light. However, some snake locks do not contain the algae or protein, rendering them grey. Green snake locks contain GFP, which is the result of a genetic mutation. It is thought to provide protection from sunlight due to the increased abundance of pigmented individuals in shallow, sunny waters. They also have a symbiotic relationship with zooxanthal, which allows the anemone to provide the algae with a protected environment and also nitrogen, which is a major component in chlorophyll, which allows it to photosynthesize. In exchange, the algae provides additional oxygen to the anemone and allows it to eliminate waste. However, most significantly, the algae provides the anemone with products of photosynthesis, such as amino acids, glucose and glycerol, which the anemone uses as a food source. Neither of these species would thrive without this interaction. The effects of climate change pose a huge threat to the populations of sea anemones on our beaches. These sensitive organisms are very perceptible to temperature change and the warming of the oceans has already started to have a negative effect on them. The average temperature of the ocean has risen by 0.6 degrees Celsius over the last four decades, leading to many recorded occurrences of anemone bleaching. Anemones that have a symbiotic relationship with algae, such as a snake locks anemone, are at a particularly high risk of damage from temperature change. This is because at high temperatures, the algae is expelled from the anemone. This then results in anemones struggling to uptake sufficient nutrients and which can lead to death in harsh conditions. Reducing your carbon footprint helps prevent the increase of ocean temperatures, which is the lead cause of anemone bleaching. Additionally, informing yourself and others around you about anemones and learning how to correctly identify different species can help with conservation, as this will help prevent people from mistaking them for plants and stepping on or killing them unintentionally. Acknowledging that they are in fact a living organism will help prevent unnecessary deaths.